When we're working on a new design and we've sketched it all out, we often want to make a scale model. And a cheap, easy material to make a scale model out of is cardboard. But we want to kind of have an accurate model when we make it out of cardboard, so it's a good representation of our design. So how do we do that? The best way to do this is to use a scale factor between the plywood and your cardboard. How do we come up with a scale factor? First, there's two considerations. We can either use a single layer of plywood, like I have here, or we could use a double layer of plywood. The double layer of plywood allows us to have little pocket holes and different ways of joining it together and makes a good size representation of plywood. So how do we get these scale factors to decide what size to use. First, we need to measure our cardboard. If you get your calipers and measure a piece of cardboard, here I get 2.84, 2.89. Cardboard dents easily, so I can easily squeeze this into 2.6. If you measure this gingerly on a nice new piece of cardboard, generally it's around 2.89 or 3 millimeters. I'm going to use 3 millimeters for this. So that means we have length A. Of three millimeters. Now we need length B, and we measure our plywood. In this case, I'm using three quarter inch plywood that measures approximately 17.5 millimeters. So now I have these two lengths, and I can put them into a calculator and get the scale factor. This gives me a scale factor of six to 35. Again, this is with a single piece of cardboard but I want to use a double sheet of cardboard. Well, that's easy. Here I have my length A is six millimeters. My length B stays the same. So that means I get a new scale factor of 12 to 35. So this is my new scale factor for double. So this is double, and then we have single. So here I have my single piece and I have a double piece. This is representing a 50 millimeter by 400 millimeter piece of plywood. It's double thickness cardboard that I have here, and so that works out really great. This is the same scaled piece of plywood in a single cardboard layer. A single cardboard layer is really almost too small for uh, human sized models, so using the double plywood is great. Another benefit of using double plywood is we can have tabs and we can simulate this. Now, of course, this isn't 100% necessary. We can go ahead and just hot glue pieces together like this, but it's nice that you always know that one sheet is half. A lot of times I just like to tape these together. You can also use hot glue. There's many types of tape you can use. You can use clear tape. You can use regular masking tape. You can also use low tack tape so you can remove it easily for cutting. So let's look at this scale. Here I have a larger piece of plywood. It's three quarter inch plywood. And I've made two example pieces of cardboard to scale. So here is our six to 35 scale. This is what this would be. This entire piece of plywood, three quarter inch, is represented to scale by this single sheet of cardboard. But we want to use double pieces of cardboard so it's just easier to work with. Doesn't get that much bigger, but it allows us to have that double sheet of plywood. And here we go. So these are exactly the same scale. This is also to the same scale. So we can see how having double sheets is easier. And then we can just use our scale factors to calculate that when we go into making our models. So we can draw up our model with dimensions and then plug in these numbers into an online calculator. And it'll be really easy for you to use. If we type in scale converter into Google, we come up with lots of different solutions. Try different ones and see which one you like the best. I'm going to click on this first one at the top. Here we can put in a scale ratio, the real length that we want to have, and then our scale length. But how do we get the scale ratio? We can scroll down, and on the same website, they have a scale factor calculator. Click on that. Now we can put in our length A's and our length B's. For a single sheet of cardboard scale model, type in three millimeters. And then for three quarter inch plywood, we can type 17.5 millimeters. This gives us a scale factor of six to 35. If we're gonna use double sheets of cardboard to represent a three quarter inch piece of plywood, type in six millimeters. This will give us a scale factor of 12 to 35. 
they give you a handy visual here to see how that is happening. The same is down here. So this is a nice general rule of thumb that you can use. Now we're going to remember this 12 by 35 scale factor and go back to the scale converter. On the scale converter, we can put in our scale ratio. Remember, that's 12 to 35. Now we can type in our real length. I like this website because we can mix units. Millimeters are best for calculating and using and counting and dividing everything. But sometimes, especially if you grew up in the United States, you may be more used to imperial units for determining the length of something that you want. That's okay, you can put in imperial units of inches. So let's say we want something to be 30 inches at this scale ratio. We can then get what it would be in millimeters. And then we can round to 261, which will be easier than dealing with inches. And we type in our 30 inches. At inches, we're gonna get this terrible decimal, 10.2857. That's pretty meaningless and not helpful. So what we want to do is keep the second thing in millimeters at a minimum. It's best to just go ahead and work in millimeters to millimeters all the time, but sometimes you may just know the dimensions of something or you may even need to have it in inches. So if you need a 30 inch piece to fit an existing doorway or something, well then we can find out exactly what that should be in millimeters and calculate that very easily. So use a scale conversion calculator for your projects, and then you can make very accurate cardboard models to test your ideas before you go and build them.